Hey folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com. Today with the latest trainer from Cyclops, which is here, the Cyclops Magnus. Um, now I've been trying out and using this trainer actually about two months now. Uh, this is a prototype, so it's why you don't see Magnus written anywhere on there. You just have the Cyclops logo right there on the side. Um, but what it is, it's a resistance control trainer, uh, but it's targeted at that mid price range. So that price range being five to 700 bucks, um, and this fits right in the middle at 599. So it competes with something like the Wahoo Kicker Snap, uh, the Cyclops, or not Cyclops, the um, uh, Tax Vortex, uh, the Elite Rampa. So things in that same ballpark of price range there. Um, it is resistance controlled, which means that I can control it via an application like Zwift or Trainer Road um, or the Cyclops Virtual Training Suite or KinoMap. Um, I can also control it via Amp Plus FEC with a head unit. So right now I've actually got the Edge 820 here configured to do a bit of a workout and that'll control the entire trainer just from this head unit itself and it sets you know, different target values so I can set it at 300 watts or 320 watts and it'll hold exactly that target there itself. Um, so a couple things to kind of walk through on this. Uh, first off down here at the bottom is you've got this knob and this knob is how you control the resistance in terms of the on wheel pressure. Uh, so all trainers have sort of this calibration factor when you're talking about a wheel on trainer. Uh, you need to go ahead and figure out how that resistance uh, is on the trainer itself. And so with this design, it's unique because you just simply lock it in place till you hear the click. So give it a second, right there. So if I back out on this and then go again, I keep tightening and then click. Super easy, you can't like screw that up, it just works. Uh, just keep your tire pressure consistent. So I do mine about 120 PSI and it's good to go. Next, we've got the flywheel here. It's a 2.6 pound flywheel, so it's a little bit less than the Vortex, which comes in about four and a half pounds. Um, but, you know, I find that this range of a trainer, uh, they're all, you know, you talk about road feel, people always talk about, well, it has a feel on the road. Honestly, in the five to $600 resistance controlled trainer range, the road feel is gonna be just kind of, hmm, it's, it's not fantastic for me. I'm still staring at a wall. So I can only mentally undo that road feel so much when I'm inside. You know, you get to the higher end trainers like those over there, the Drivo from Elite, the uh, Tax Neo, the Wahoo Kicker, and even Cyclops' own Hammer Trainer. The road feel increases because they have more inertia there. Um, again, I think in some cases, it's sort of like comparing apples to pears. You know, they're, yeah, they're different, but they're all in the same category and you're all inside. So next we've got this quick release lever here. Uh, basically this just allows you to pop the trainer in place, you pull it up, um, but on this side there's three different notches, which means that you can use kind of different wheels more easily without having to adjust the, uh, the width of this lever system. And so it's just kind of simple and straightforward. Uh, last but not least, it transmits both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. So you'll get AMP Plus FEC, which is the trainer control protocol I talked about earlier, allows apps and things like this to control it. Then you also have Bluetooth smart control for apps as well. Um, that's using our proprietary Cyclops uh, protocol. There is no Bluetooth smart standard across the board, so they all kind of have to do their own thing. Then it'll also transmit AMP plus power and Bluetooth smart power. Uh, so you can hook those up straight to your head unit uh, and just for reading that power in. From a max wattage standpoint, this comes in at 1500 watts. So it means I can put out 1500 watts of power and about 15% of grade simulation. Uh, now, 1500 watts of power is a fair bit. I personally top out around 1000 watts. Uh, you know, if you don't know how many watts um, you can put out, I wouldn't worry about this stat. There's, if you don't know how many watts, you're nowhere near 1500 watts. That's a, a pretty darn good cyclist. So next let's talk about sound levels and noise. Um, now I'm gonna walk over here to my trusty uh, sound decibel meter here. So what we got is this unit that will tell me my different decibel levels um, based on how loud I am talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up to 70 decibels. Um, and you hit the video up there to see how this all works. Uh, but it's a super easy way to demonstrate sound decibel levels. Most trainers, if they are kind of average middle of the road, sort of peak in just above the 70 range, like 73, 74 decibels. Um, whereas quieter trainers are low, lower 60s. And then above that, you can get into the 80s and almost 90 decibels uh, for some crazy um, uh, noisy trainers. So I've configured this right now 70 decibels. When it goes above 70, we go into the yellow. If I talk really loud and goes above that, uh, by 15 decibels, we hit red and you hear that awesome little alarm. Now, one thing to keep in mind about sound levels is that the most important factor is actually speed. Um, so the faster I go, the louder it's gonna get in here, no matter what wattage I'm putting out. I can put 300 watts out at 20 miles an hour or 300 watts at 10 miles an hour, um, and the sounds are gonna be drastically different even though it's the same amount of wattage. The second most important thing is your tire. Certain tires are quieter than others. Uh, ironically, like for example, Tax makes a trainer tire, 
it's one of the loudest tires I've tested. Um, now, it keeps these little bits of black uh, rubber from going on a living room, so you gotta kind of balance that. Uh, personally, I don't worry about the little bit black stuff because I'm not in my living room. Um, and honestly, I just change my tires each year anyways and the problem is solved. Uh, so that's my sort of like two second opinion on that. Um, but again, remember, sound levels are purely connected to speed. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on. Okay, so now I'm on the trainer here and I'm talking, which is why I bump into the yellow. Um, but otherwise, actually, if I stop talking, you'll see it'll go back to green. Right now on the decibel meter here on the side, um, when I'm not talking, it's about 56 to 60 decibels, which is actually pretty darn quiet, to be honest. And again, I'm in a gearing here that is configured such that it's not producing a great amount of speed, despite putting out 200 and something watts right now. So again, it's all about the speed. So I'm gonna stop talking and kind of demonstrate this. As you can see, it's on the green side, it's happy, it's quiet. Uh, it is a very a fairly quiet trainer in terms of how trainers sound. Um, and again, as soon as I start talking, it, it bumps up again. The entire time I didn't hear 60 decibels. To demonstrate speed now, it's gonna hold my same wattage. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase my uh, gearing here to the front ring in the first and the, the big ring in the front and small ring in the back, which produces the fastest possible speed. So as you can see, I'm fluttering just above and below 70 decibels, which matches exactly what Cyclops has advertised it as, which is 69 to 70 decibels peak. And right there I was going between about 68 and 72 decibels. So there you go, just a quick look at audio levels on the Cyclops Magnus. So last but not least, uh, Cyclops hasn't quite finalized what their accuracy claim will be for the Bagness. Uh, it sounds like it could be plus or minus 5%, but we'll have to wait and see. They might best that and be a little better than that. Uh, still, that'd be in the same range as something like Picker Snap and others uh, for this particular price point. Um, you go in, if you hit that link down below in the description field, I have information in my full blown post on this trainer, including a quick look at accuracy in terms of how I found it in testing over the course of the summer on my most recent test. Uh, and then definitely hit the like button if you like the video. Uh, and then more importantly, hit the subscribe button down below. The next week and a half has tons and tons of cool uh, new things coming out, including cool new trainers. And I've got a lot of videos lined up for those. So uh, you don't want to miss those. And that'll go ahead and get you notified the second those come out. With that, thanks for watching.